Oh, what's up, family? Listen, in the past 10 minutes, this wasn't just a youth group, this was a movement. This was a movement, come on. I love being with custom, my custom family. I love worshiping with you. I think the best, best thing we could do as a ministry and as a generation, shh, find a seat. If you need a seat, we'll get more out. Best thing we can do as a, as a generation and a ministry is worship. Is worship. Is worship our savior. He came to our rescue. Some of us don't understand what rescue means, but you will. <laughs> Some of us grasp and we understand what rescue really means. So, I love that we're all together. One night, late night. Let me give you a snapshot of the rest of the summer, okay? Um, July, one night, we're gonna do the Renegades. So, we are the Renegades. We're gonna have five or six or seven Renegade speakers who are gonna come and they're gonna be your peers. We're gonna share from other campuses. So, we're excited about that. Um, then we have a little thing called camp. Yep. Then we have uh, another thing called August One Night, which this is the cool part. We're gonna rent out a water park in North Charleston and we're gonna have one night. We're gonna, instead of see you at the pool, we're gonna see you at the pool, all right? That was good, you should be laughing louder than that because that was like straight fire. And then, this is the big thing. Shh. September's one night may look a little different. We have some, some, some fun things in the works where we're, we're talking about really dividing and conquering and, and having an opportunity for the middle school to have their own service and the high school to have their own service. We've just gotten to that point where we're a little too big, to that kind of thing. So high schoolers, I wanna speak to you about, hey, hold, hold tight with us, we've got something in store for you. And middle schoolers, we've got something in store for you. It's just gonna be the best of both worlds, right? Sound cool? Are you ready to dive in? Can you pray with me, Father, right now? We just thank you so much for this family, this time together, that, Lord, we will dive into your word, we will listen, we will learn, and we, God, God, we will live this thing out. And so I just pray that there will be no distractions, that we won't distract the person to the next left and to the right of us, but God, you wanna speak to each and every one of us individually because that's who you are. You're our individual savior. You know us you knew us before we were born. You know the needs we have. You know what we need, God. And so we give those needs to you. We give this night to you, and we say, have your way. In Jesus' name, everyone shouted. Yeah. All right, how many of you, okay, a little bit of um, confession. First of all, who's going to camp? If I could do the moonwalk, I would straight up moonwalk right now. This could be so fun. How many of you find it difficult to make decisions? Now there's certain decisions I can make like this, right? Kiss my wife, <laughs> absolutely. Now when my team asks me where do we wanna go eat today, I go, I don't know, you, you figure it out. I just, I'll go eat, whatever. And then they mention something, I go, nah, not that one. <laughs> right, Who, who's with me on that? <laughs> Who here has decision paralysis? You know what that means? Where you just can't make your mind up when you have like so many options in front of you. I was talking to somebody just, I don't know, maybe 40 minutes ago about shoes. And I said, oh, those are awesome shoes. Every time I go to a store, I see all these shoes and I don't know which one to get. Not that I can afford any of them anyway. And she goes, she said, you have to know what you want when you go in. I said, girl, you preached my message tonight. Why don't you get up here and preach it? You gotta know what you want when you go, you need to know what you want. So everyone say, decide to decide. Decide to decide, say it again. If you can grasp that statement, if you can understand that statement, I need to decide to decide. I'm gonna explain that whole thing in just a second. That'll change a lot of heartache, a lot of scars, and a lot of baggage. Every day we have decisions to make, right? What to wear. Do I go to school or do I fake sick, right? We don't have school now, but you will have that decision to make. What do I do this weekend? Anybody got big plans this weekend? No, whatever. 
Who do I, who do I hang out with? Um, how will I act or react? This is, a, this is a pretty important one. How will I act or react in certain situations? Do I obey the rules? Do I break the rules? Do I obey my parents or my authorities? Do I honor authority? Or do I dishonor authority? Shh. If you do me a huge favor, I would love for you guys to not literally but spiritually lean in, take every distract, distraction you've got. If you've got a fidget spinner, I'm, I'm sure that's probably okay because you can't text with that. Um, but put your phones away. Put them away. Let's, uh, let's, let's allow God, make a decision right now. Decide to decide that we're gonna allow God to do something in our life. We have a decision to make every single day. Life is full of decisions. It's kind of like a would you rather game every day. So let's play would you rather. Yeah? So you're gonna see a blue screen and a red screen. I'm gonna ask you, you're gonna see one box say sit and one box say stand. If you choose the box that says sit, then you stay sitting. If you choose the box that says stand, you stand. Pretty simple, right? Try this with me, stand, sit, stand, sit, you get it, all right, so here we go. Would you rather have the hiccups for the rest of your life or always feel like you have to sneeze, not be able to? You gotta choose, you gotta choose, just choose it. All right, Shh. reset, reset, next. Would you rather be itchy for the rest of your life or be sticky for the rest of your life? You'd rather itch? I'd rather be sticky. Because what if the sticky tastes good? Mm. All right, reset. Would you rather eat poison ivy or eat a handful of bees? All right, reset. Would you rather sound like Jar Jar Binks? Misa, Misa. Or sound like Siri? All right, hold the screen, hold the screen. Don't change yet. Reset, don't change, don't, don't show the screen yet. Reset. This one, this is serious. This next one is serious. Actually, there's two more. Okay, we're at two more. Here we go. This one right here. Would you rather look weak but actually be strong? Would you rather look strong but actually be weak? <laughs> it's good, it's good. All right, this one's serious. Don't change it yet. Here's a serious one. This is a big deal, all right? It's gonna involve pain. I like pain. Here we go. Would you rather pry off your thumbnail with a fork or put a toothpick under your big toe and kick the wall? All right. All right, reset. We're gonna come back. I have some more would you rather, so just hold tight with me. <laughs> lean in, lean in, lean in, lean in. Here's a very important point right here. We live every day of our lives invisibly motivated by, the fear, by either the fear of God or the fear of man. And that affects how we make decisions. I'm gonna say it again. We live every day of our lives invisibly motivated by the fear of God or the fear of man, and that affects how we make our decisions. King Saul had such a case in point where he said, and I just, I kinda paraphrased the verse. He said, yes, I've sinned, for I was afraid of the people and did what they demanded. King Saul fell out of the favor of God because of fear of man and really jealousy. Here's another one, Proverbs. The fear of man will prove to be a trap and a snare. You can't get out of a trap and a snare. You know how some animals get out of a trap and a snare? They chew their leg off to try to escape this thing. A trap and a snare confines you, it binds you, and it destroys you, right? 
And that's what it's saying. The fear of man will prove to be a trap and a snare. In life, we're faced with decisions. We're, we're always faced with a would you rather. Every day, you're faced with a would, would you rather. Would you rather follow your friend's advice or wise advice? And the friend's advice may be wise, I don't know, or, or let's say an unwise friend's advice. <laughs> let's say that, because you may have some, some good friends who give you great advice. So would you rather follow unwise advice or wise advice? Would you rather gossip or stay silent? Would you rather bully or defend? You say that. You say that, but here's the biggest deciding factor of your choices. How you make decisions is not what you say, it's how you act. That determines your decisions. That shows how and what you value and what you decide is important. Would you rather live by the spirit or live by the flesh? Would you rather have the fear of God or the fear of man? Would you rather live for God or live for self? You know that if you're wrapped up in yourself, you make for a very small gift, right? And the, and the middle letter in the word sin is what? I. I. It's all about I, all about me, all about I. Would you rather live with the fear of God or the fear of man? And I'm not saying the fear of God is like this. What I mean by fear of God and even fear of man is that respect, that honor, that I would do anything for, that you know, this decide to decide really is creating standards and, and, and values for your life, and, and there's no in between, you have to choose. Not choosing is even choosing. And with so much confusion and distraction in our world today, I mean, right, isn't it noisy? Isn't culture noisy? You can speak back to me, isn't it noisy? I mean, our phones, even though they're silent, they're noise, right? Yeah, they are. Our TVs, even though it may be on mute or even if it's showing a video, it's noise. How many of you guys, when you do homework, you have to have some kind of noise? How many of you, when you go to bed, you have to have some kind of noise? Right? I'm not saying that going to bed with noise is, is a bad thing. I have one of those white noise makers. Who's a white noise maker person or a fan? Right, it's like this shh, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm out, I'm out. But if it's silent, I'm like, just awkwardly uncomfortable. With culture screaming at you, screaming at you, screaming at you, there's so much noise. You need to have a plan of attack on how to make the right decisions. And listen, I, I, I speak about this tonight because you are at the age where the decisions you're making now will set you up for the future. The decisions that you're making now will determine the kinds of friends you have in the future, will determine the kind of job you have in the future, will determine the kind of ethical or non-ethical person or, or person of character or no character, determine who you are in the future. The decisions you make now, and it's, it's, it's sad, honestly, really, it's sad that there's that much weight that is put upon you at this age. Why can't it be when I'm 26 or 27 that I have to make the right decisions or you know, I'm making the decisions then that will set me up for the future? Why is it now? Because you're in this place of just a lot of uncertainty, a lot of like just shaky foundations sometimes and a lot of you know, inconsistencies and, and why do I have to make like legit decisions now? But that, that's the truth. The decisions you make now are determining your future. So you need to have the decision decided in your heart ahead of time. And if you settle it ahead of time, you will do the right thing at that time. So you need to decide to decide. Say it, decide to decide. There's a story of a captain who, who had a route from Columbia to California, and he had this constant route. And he would go back and forth from Columbia to California, and finally these, these drug traders, these, these drug dealers, they, um, they caught wind of this captain who was always there and then would go to California and they just caught his consistency back and forth. And so they approached him and they said, hey, have a, we have an idea, we'll pay you $50,000 if you take this small shipment of drugs back to California. The captain's like, no, I can't do that. I'm a man of principle, I can't do that. So back to his job, back and forth, back and forth. Finally they come to, again, come to him again we'll pay you $150,000. 
if you take this shipment of drugs back to California? No. They came to him a couple more times. They were upwards into the almost millions of dollar range. And the last time they came to him when they were about ready to give a million dollar price tag, he contacted the FBI and they, they created this sting operation and caught these guys in the act. And the FBI said, why did you tell us now? And the captain said this, they were getting really close to my price. Did you hear that? They were getting really close to the price I was about ready to sell out. He decided to decide. You've heard this said before, this isn't original. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. And whether you realize it or not, we live in a very dangerous, dangerous world, one that is designed to destroy your minds, destroy your bodies, destroy your relationships, and destroy your self-esteem. That's what this world is all about, is to destroy you. There's a, there's a verse in the scripture that, that says the enemy uh, seeks to kill and destroy, right? And uh, that's, what, that's what Satan is all about, is to destroy. And if he can't physically take you out through death, then there's other schemes he has to take you out. Some in our decisions. And so when you have the plan of attack to decide to decide, to know what you're going to do when you get into that situation, that is going to bring some simplicity to your life and some simplicity to your decisions and some blessing. Deciding to decide is a protection plan for your life and for your heart. It's protection from guilt, it's protection from memories and bad memories, bad reputation from scars. And it's not that you plan to get in trouble. Listen, I don't, I don't think any of you um, go to bed at night and are trying to scheme, how can I get in trouble with my parents or with the law or with anything tomorrow? It's not that you plan to get in trouble, we'll throw it back up there. It's not that you're planning to get in trouble, the problem is that you don't plan not to. Did you hear that? It's not that we're sitting there going, how can I get in the worst trouble? It's that we don't have a plan not to get in trouble. And so when those situations come, when those moments come upon us, temptation, um, Maybe you're in a store with somebody and it's like, hey, just take this, put this in your purse, put this in your pocket, put this in whatever, shoplift, or maybe there's temptations with a relationship, maybe there's temptations with, you know, you can, you can fill in the gaps with the temptations that, that are targeted for your heart because you know your weakest areas, you know your weakest moments, right? And it's, it's not that you plan, it's just like the scripture says, the thing that I wanna do, I don't do, the thing that I don't wanna do, I find myself doing is because we didn't have a plan not to. And when you decide to decide, you're creating a plan not to. Does that make sense? For me, um, my plan, my personal plan, my deciding to decide, and I make decisions every day. I make business decisions, I make ministry decisions, I make family decisions, I make husband decisions, I make father decisions. My deciding to decide is this. I picture the cross, everyone picture the cross with me, right? But I picture Jesus Christ on the cross, and I picture him laying on the ground, right? And that sin that I need to get to, that I want to do, that my flesh is, is wanting me to go after, I picture that I've gotta literally step, step over Jesus Christ who was crucified for me. This is, this is my plan, this is how I got through high school, this is how I got through college, this is how I'm getting through life, right? Because just because I'm a pastor doesn't mean that we face temptations. Just because, I'm not, I'm not 65, but I'm saying just because someone's 65 or 70 doesn't mean they don't face temptations. They have, to, they have a plan, they have to have a plan. Pastors have to have a plan. Students have to have a plan. You need to decide to decide. So my plan is, I picture the cross of Christ and I picture Jesus on that Christ saying don't. It's not worth it. I did this so you don't have to. Don't, it's not worth it. And I play that out in my mind. I play that out in my heart that I would have to literally step over him, spit on his face, to get to that action, to get to that sin, to get to whatever. Remember, sin, I, is selfish. So I'm reminding myself, that's a very selfish, stupid thing, John, if you do that. There are other people who will be affected by that. So that's my plan of attack. That's my deciding to decide, is I have to decide to step over Christ, who died for my sins, died for my selfishness, to get to that, let's just say it, get to that crap, right? <gasps> There's a lot worse things someone could say from the pulpit, I didn't say it. So decide to decide is being proactive, 
planning not to, right? Deciding to decide is you win before you begin. Deciding to decide is settling, is setting standards that are non-negotiable for you, saying this is sin for me if I do it. It may not be sin for you and I'm not gonna convict you or condemn you, but for me, <coughs> it's not good. It's, it's, it's creating so be it standards for yourself. Deciding to decide is, de- is deliberate daily decisions. Deciding to decide is settling your core convictions. And if you don't have core convictions, biblical convictions, you will be captured by culture. Daniel, in Daniel 1.8 said this, Daniel made up his mind, and some versions say he decided not to defile himself, not to, you know, and at that time it was to eat the, the food of the king and, and, and he had a specific standard for him. And so Daniel decided to decide. Job says this, I made a covenant with my eyes not to look with lust upon a young woman. He decided to decide. Joshua says this, <clears throat> now he's, a, he's 110 right now at, at this moment where he's saying this, and he gathered the tribes of Israel. Anybody remember what Israel's name was before it was Israel? Jacob. <coughs> Right, was it Jacob? Or was it Esau? Anyway, gather the tribe, there you go. Gather the tribes with him, and he's saying, listen, his last words to his children of Israel, his last words are this, choose. Choose. Choose you this day whom you are going to serve. Choose today whom you will serve. Then he says this, but as for me, As for me and my house, my family, my family, my squad, my crew, we're gonna serve the Lord. So you choose. And he's saying, you can can mess with the gods of your forefathers, you can mess with the gods of, you know, your friends, but you need to decide, you need to choose. You need to choose today who you're gonna serve. For me, my house, we're gonna serve the Lord. So how do we decide to decide? Let's go back to would you rather. (laughs) Remember, stand sit. Would you rather give gifts or receive gifts? (laughs) I'm selfish, I'm selfish. Everyone else is lying that you're standing up. You all wanna get a gift, you know it. (laughs) <laughs> would you rather one wish granted today, three wishes granted five years from now? <laughs> All right, reset. <laughs> would you rather be the most popular in school or the smartest? Can I get another water? All right, reset. Couple more, couple more, couple more. Would you rather, this is a tough one. This is a tough one. You gotta choose. You're faced with choices every day. It's a tough one, wasn't it? (laughs) All right, reset. Would you rather tell your best friend a lie or tell your parents the truth? You gotta choose. Smart man, smart man. Stood up real quick. Tell your best friend a liar, tell your parents the truth. All right, here we go. Basically, you're saying one or the other, right? Would you rather, here we go, <clears throat> get even or get over it? <laughs> All right, well, this message is for every one of you who just stood. This message is for you. Here we go. <clears throat> We're going to close it out. 
How do we make the right decisions? Well, you guys got a check, blank check, you can't cash it. How do you make the right decisions? Listen, shh, shh, shh. it's gonna cost you. It's gonna cost you, and I'm gonna come back to this, but I need you guys to see the boxes. It's gonna cost you. There are four, there are four areas in which we make decisions every day and how we make our decisions. The first one is peer pressure. We're influenced by peer pressure. Now listen, an on-the-spot decision made in a peer-pressured environment is almost always the wrong decision. Did you hear that? An on-the-spot decision made in a peer-pressured environment is almost always the wrong decision. If you haven't made that plan to decide to decide, right, and you're in that peer-pressured environment, and we've got all those <coughs> environments are super, all of our friendships, there's gonna be peer pressure. I even face peer pressure. And if you're cornered with an on-the-spot decision in that peer-pressured environment, nine out of 10 times, if not 10 out of 10 times, if you did not have a plan of attack, it's always the wrong decision. Some of you may have, are be dealing with, may, some of you may have dealt with consequences because of that. Stop taking advice from people that aren't going where you're called to be. Did you hear me? Stop taking advice from people who aren't called where you're called to be. Those who follow the crowd, they get lost in it, friends. They get lost in that crowd. So how do you avoid influence of negative peer pressure? If you've got notes, write these down. Choose your friends and your relationships carefully. Settle your core convictions, your decide to decide. Have daily disciplines. Choose your friends carefully. Settle your core convictions. Have daily disciplines. So you got peer pressure environment. Anybody know what another box might be? <coughs> Would you say drama? All right, well, it's kind of the same. Emotional. Emotional decisions, decision-making process, right? So some people make decisions really quick because they're, they're influenced by their friends. Some it's emotional. Never make a permanent decision on temporary feelings. Feelings are fleeting. Everyone is vulnerable to certain times than others. Everyone has vulnerable moments. Here are those moments. When you're hungry, you make hanger decisions. <coughs> I feel like I snap at my wife and my kids more when I'm hungry. It's true. When you're angry, right? After an argument, after an argument with your friends or with your parents, you're like, ah, I just wanna, and you're like, well, time out, wait a minute, no, that'll get me in jail. <laughs> Whoa. When you're lonely, after a breakup, when you're tired, when you're tired, right, it's like you just, you, you can't think straight, you're just kinda like, I just need some sleep. Some, listen, sometimes one of the most spiritual things you can do is sleep, all right? Honestly, sometimes one of the most spiritual things, before you need to make a decision, just sleep. Just take a nap. Listen, have a code, have a code with your friends. <coughs> have a code with your friends, like, hey listen, it's nap 30, I need, I need, to, I need it's nap 30, I need to go. That means I can't make a decision right now, I just, I need sleep. Envy, greed, you make weird decisions when you're envious or greedy. Grief, when you're going through grief, if there's a death, a breakup, or just, so, you know, something just causes you to grieve. Anxiety, after final exams, during a family conflict, when you enter a new school, or when you enter a new student ministry that you don't know anybody and you're walking in feeling like, I'm gonna give this one shot. And then, listen, a lot of times I've heard from parents and I've heard from students themselves that they leave this place having no one said hi to them. And my heart breaks. My heart breaks. Because every one of us are looking for a place to belong. Every one of us are looking for a place to fit in. This should be the most safest place. Your emotions will deceive you. That's why the Bible said the heart's wicked above everything else, it's wicked. It can't be trusted. I love this, um, my, hero, my hero in ministry, her name is Jeannie Mayo, she said this, without a devotional life, you will have an emotional life. I love that, isn't that great? It's catchy, write it down, tattoo it on your arm, just kidding. <clears throat> without a devotional life, you will have an emotional life. So. 
peer pressure, emotions. Some people make decisions based off of intellectual decisions, which is weighing their options. Who makes lists? Who are list makers in this room? Pros and cons, right? Listen, you might need to write this one down. If you've made a mistake, you've made a wrong decision, and I'm pretty sure 10 out of 10 people in this room have made a wrong decision. Two lies the enemy throws at you. You've made a wrong decision, there's no hope for you. That's a lie of the enemy, send that back to hell. And, well, you already made a mistake, well, might as well just keep making a mistake. That's a lie, send it back to hell. Here's what you need to write down. God's a God of second chances. But we need to be people, students, who make wise second choices. We need to make better second choices. God's a God of second chances. If you surrender your life to him and you have that authentic moment with him and you have that coming to him in repentance, he's a second chance God. Always, third chance, fourth chance. We need to make different decisions. We need to be people of second choices, better second choices. So, peer pressure, say it with me. Ha, 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 Spiritual. Here we go. Learn to pray. Pray, pray, pray as though your life depends on it because it just might. Learn to wait. Patience in this short and very distracted attention span culture now will always yell louder. <coughs> Scripture says they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. Be still and know that I am God. Learn to ask and listen. Silence the noise of this culture so you can truly hear God. And here's some questions you need to ask when you're making a decision. And this should be the one that you go to all the time when you make a decision. This is called, right here, <laughs> this is called maturity. You hear me? I'm gonna teach tonight. I'm gonna teach tonight. This is called maturity. An emotional life without a devotional life, you're gonna make wrong decisions probably a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. If, if, you, don't, if you don't have a decide to decide, your friends are gonna dictate your future and they're gonna run your life and they're gonna run into the ground and you are not gonna be a happy camper. This is called growing up. This is called maturity. This is where you need to land with your decision making process. Spiritual, and here's how you do it. If you don't know what to do, go to God's word, right? Go to God's word. Every answer is in God's word. You just gotta seek it out. You gotta dig in to find it. If you feel like, I don't know how to find it, I don't know where to find it, awesome, all right? Then seek wise advice. Wise advice. And I'm not stacking them in like orders or whatever. If you're like, hey, Pastor John, I can't find <coughs> an answer to this situation I'm dealing with. Okay, I, did you look in God's word? What's God's words have to say? I don't know, I don't know it very well. Okay, sweet, okay. What's your small group leader have to say? What's your parent, if they love Jesus and, 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 and they, they, they kinda know the right way to, to give you advice, what, what do they have to say? What do your parents have to say? They don't just have to be Christians. What do they have to say about it? What does your pastor have to say about it? What do wise people in your life, and you need to have wise people in your life, what do they have to say about it? And if they feel like, man, I just don't know, I don't know, that seems kind of fuzzy, I don't know the right answer to give you on that one, then you need to ask yourself, is it the wise thing to do? Is it the wise thing for me to do? I can't find it in God's word, you, you will find it in God's word, I, I, I guarantee you that. If advice doesn't seem to be like, they're not sure, which I guarantee you, <laughs> Majority of the time, the wise advice will give you the answer you don't wanna hear. They're gonna say the wise thing that you should do, <clears throat> but you need to ask yourself, is it the wise thing to do? Here's a, a story um, that I have, and I probably shared it a few years ago, but a former student of mine, his name is Jordan Smith. Uh, he plays for the C Cleveland Indians baseball organization. He got drafted, um, but his senior year in high school, he was at a party and he, he drank, and he drank a little too much. And the coaches didn't find out. No one really cared because friends weren't gonna rat on each other. But he was the star athlete in that community. 
the star athlete. Like every once in a while there's that athlete in the community that everyone goes, oh my goodness, we have no clue how this guy was even formed in this, this community, but he like just shot through and he made a name for the community, he made a name for himself, and he just felt so convicted, he came to me. He said, Pastor John, what do I do? I said, well, what do you think the wise thing to do is, Jordan? <laughs> Here's what I would do. Jordan went to his coach, he said, coach, I drank at this party. They benched him for three games. They stripped him of every award he was supposed to win at their banquet. Every student who won an award said, I can't take this, this is Jordan's. <laughs> and he sat the rest of the year. Went and played college at a local college, then went to a university in Minnesota, not by a scholarship, he didn't have the greatest of grades, and he worked hard, and he got drafted out of college with the Cleveland Indians, and he's serving the Lord today. And I text him every once in a while, and I say, that's the favor and the blessing of God upon your life and your decisions, but what is the wise thing to do? You can't ask, can I or should I? You need to ask, is it wise? So, I know I'm going a little bit over time, but I just feel like this is just something that we need to grasp as a, as a student body, right? We've got all night to play and hang out, and I'm almost done. Once you decide to decide, life becomes simpler. It's not easier, but it becomes simpler. Why? You've established a set of values to live by, a compass to guide you, and you gain momentum. Dave Ramsey just defines momentum this way, and if the team wants to come up, you guys can come up. Defines momentum this way. Momentum is focus intensity over time multiplied by God, unlimited momentum. Keep that screen up. <clears throat> focus intensity, focus. You gotta focus. When you make a decide to decide, Packed. When you make a, a conviction statement, when you, when you have a convictions and biblical convictions and so be it standards and you create standards in your life, you've gotta have focus. Intense focus. Because there's gonna be moments where you're at a party and everybody else is doing it and you gotta go back to that conviction. There's gonna be moments when everybody else is wanting to do this or do that or do this and you know that you've created, I've decided not to. I've made a commitment to God not to. And there's gonna be moments where they're gonna laugh at you. It's going to cost you. Listen, that check is for you to hold on to. What's it worth to you? It's gonna cost you to make a decide to decide decision. It's gonna cost you to have convictions in your life. But I would rather pay now versus pay with regrets later. You hear me? I'd rather go through the pain of paying for it all now up front. I'd rather do it all up front than down the road have to deal with this because I made this decision that time and I gotta deal with this because I made this decision that time and I gotta deal with this because I made this decision that time because I was weak. What's it gonna cost? Success is a few simple disciplines practiced every day while failure is simply a few errors in judgment repeated every day. All right, take that check in your hand. I'll just close your eyes with me. We're gonna, we're gonna close real quick. I love you guys so much. I love and I feel honored when I'm able to share God's word with you and share God's challenge with you. And I pray that tonight we will have taken it serious because listen, even tonight we had decisions to make. Do I listen, do I check out? Do I just kinda get through this so I can get on to bubble soccer and the food that's coming later and blah, blah, blah? Every decision you make will cost you. Students who decide to decide are going to look a little different than others. When you stop chasing the wrong things, you give the right things a chance to catch up and to catch you. When you stop chasing the wrong things, you give the right things a chance to catch. You catch the right things. And we make decisions every day. You made a decision to be here tonight. You made a decision to either listen or not. But we have one major decision in our life to make. 
one major decision. It's not who I marry. It's not what job I want. It's not what friends I hang out with. We have one decision, one major life decision to make. And that's live for God or live for self. Would you rather live for God or live for self? Live for God is in the stand category. Live for self is in the sit category. And I'm gonna ask you to make a decision. Would you rather, this isn't a salvation decision, I'm just saying, would you rather, we're gonna get to salvation in a second, but I wanna ask you now, custom students, not custom youth group, custom movement, would you rather live for God or live for self? You gotta choose. It's one choice to make. My prayer is that we take this serious. My prayer, we're gonna stay standing, those of you who stood, those of you who sat, I admire your boldness, I admire your honesty. Those of you who stood, I admire your boldness, I admire your honesty. Only you can tell in your heart if this was the right decision to make or if it was fear of man or fear of God. Decide who has your heart tonight. Decide who's number one in your heart tonight. Deuteronomy says this, and then we'll close with worship. Today I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choices you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. Oh, custom students, that you would choose life. That you would choose life, not death. That you would take a stand and choose life so that you could truly live, that you could live in freedom and not baggage and bondage and guilt and shame, that you can choose life. And listen, God is a God of second chances, so now make good second choices. The past is the past, get rid of it, kick it back to where it belongs, and we have a new fresh start, a new fresh beginning, and we will choose life. Choose life so that you might live, and those following you will live. Let's pray. Father, tonight, I pray that this landed on hearts. I pray that this landed on minds. I pray that it landed on our emotions. I pray that it landed in our spirit. And I pray that those who stood to say, hey, I choose God, not self, would mean that and own it in their heart. And I thank you for this ministry. I thank you for what we, what we do together. I thank you for our campuses. I thank you for every student in this place who has been here forever and maybe the very first time student who walked in this place. I'm thankful that they are choosing life tonight. Lord, we love you. We praise you. And as we come to the altar and we begin to worship, may our worship be a little different than it was in the beginning. May it not be distraction or distracted, but may we be focused and intense in our worship to you. And may you multiply it, God, and may you give that momentum into our lives and we can live this thing, this faith journey out, unashamed. In your name I pray. Amen. Before we come and worship, you have a card in your hand. Tonight, if you made a decision, yes, you made a decision to choose life, but if you made that decision for the first time to choose God, to say, I want God, I want to begin a relationship with him, on that note card, there is an ABC. If you could do me the honor to fill that out and meet me in that back next steps area and some of our leaders in the back next steps area right over there, I would love to pray with you, talk with you, get to know you. If you made that decision to begin a relationship with God, fill it out, meet me back there, because that is the best decision you will ever make. Let's worship.